TM. Well, uh, another long play game, and um, uh, yeah, uh, fingers crossed. Uh, Fifty percent of the time, I do face someone who's, who cheats. It's just a fact. Fingers crossed, we can just have a normal, proper game of chess now. Well, I say normal, proper game. My, my opponent has just played a three. I don't think I've ever faced that move at all on, on move two. Uh, I'm playing Man Lopez from Argentina. Now I'm so paranoid now. I know some of you are moaning like, oh, you all say the guys are cheat. Well, the last guy I played did get banned. And when it's happened to you as much as it's happened to me, you do get paranoid. But I'm just going to try to get that out of my mind. Even if he's cheating, he will get knocked off and we're going to beat him. And this is all about me explaining my ideas and hopefully showing you a good game of chess, no matter what. Um, I don't think my opponent is a, uh, is a cheat so because he's saying, wait, wow, is that really you? So I'm just going to say hi to him. So if, if he, you know, so anyway, let's get on. So what I've been working on recently is my Killer Dutch um, course. Now this is going to be coming out of chessable. It's probably, I've probably put more work into this than I have done nearly anything recently. Um, my first, the first DVD that Ginger Jim made was The Killer Dutch. That was 10 years ago or so. Uh, then I brought out a book on it. And this latest thing for chessable is going to be all the latest theory updated again. Quite a lot has changed obviously in 10 years. And uh, you know, I, I put a lot of effort into this chessable course. Um, I haven't even recorded the videos yet. I, I, I've just been trying to get the uh, uh, actual stuff done um, for, uh, you know, the, the, I don't know what you call it, ebook files. And so I hope it's going to be very good. So, you know, I'll, I'll obviously let you all know when that comes out in chessable. It's my first chessable project. So I'm, you know, I'm hoping it's going to do well. And if it does do well, I'll probably do more on chessable. Um, okay, so my opponent, he's been, he's been a bit too nice. I don't like it when your opponent's too nice. It's a bloody war. It's, you're not supposed to share a cup of tea with your opponent. You're supposed to, you're supposed to, you know, be punching each other in the face. And he's saying, I really enjoy your channel. One of my inspirations when I was picking up chess. Oh, he's a nice guy, isn't he? He's a nice guy. Um, so I better say thanks. And making a YouTube video here, just to put some pressure on you. <laughs> put some pressure on you. And then we put a smiley face, because uh, if you put a smiley face, it's kind of like saying in life, I don't mean to insult you, but, and then someone insults you. Uh, and if you put a smiley face at the end of anything, you can sort of see, I'm just going to put some pressure on you, but it's okay, smiley face. So it's like, it doesn't matter what you say, because you had a smiley face. You know, that's the way I use smiley faces anyway. Okay, so, what the hell's that? And, uh, okay, attack of the bloody, it's a nice hot day here. Okay, so the, the way I play the Dutch, these are the first three moves that I do, generally when I play the Dutch. I mean, I'm probably, like I say, one of the world's leading experts in the classical Dutch. I've certainly played it more than any other grandmaster in the world. I've had some good results, so I know this really well. If you watch my videos, you'll probably be aware that um, I play it a lot of time with good success. You know some of the basic ideas. Now, I could have played another opening, of course, but, uh, you know, uh, the Dutch is really my main opening that I play most of the time. Okay, so my opponent has just gone uh, knight to c3. He's now saying, oh boy, <laughs> poor guy. Hope I haven't pressurised him too much. And I guess the idea of a3 is to stop bishop b4. It's not completely stupid. I mean, I know I remember Kramnik playing a similar idea, um, it, but he played it with c4. So with knight c3, I mean, again, the first thing I do whenever I'm playing is look at my opponent's move and try to work out what their idea is. And it's a normal developing move, but... He might be considering at some point one of these breaks which the knight supports. Now, ideally, here, I would like to play b6 and bishop b7 because this is a very nice square for the bishop. If you can get your bishop to b7, it's often worth doing. Um, so I'm just wondering if b6, if he will go d5, is that something I should worry about? I mean, it's probably not too scary. I can take it, knight takes bishop b7. And that looks all right for me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this opportunity. Often you can't play the bishop here, 
Um, White's main line against the Dutch involves g3 and bishop g2. This is what White normally plays. And the reason White plays this is to get the bishop on a very good diagonal. And that also puts black off playing plans with b6. Because if black uh, plays b6, you can get hit on this diagonal. But now we can see that uh, me playing b6 here uh, gives me the, the opportunity to get my bishop here quite safely. Um, and I can control some central squares. Okay, my opponent's talking again. Should be banned from talking in chess. No, he's, he's, I'm sure he's a lovely guy. And he's saying very nice things. Oh boy, well I wanted to let you know that you definitely have me a bit starstruck. Is that the phrase right now? Anyway, best of luck. Well, it's very nice. That's very, very, it's a bit too nice, like I say. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks. And good luck to you, but not too much luck. No, I'm not going to add that. Okay, thanks and good luck to you. Smiley face. You get the idea now. Okay, right, so my opponent's uh, playing good moves. He's trying to really gain control of these two squares. By capturing the knight here, he can get a bit more control of that, but I, I don't see why I shouldn't develop my bishop normally and just aim to uh, you know keep, keep, keep these squares under control. My next idea... And commonly, when the bishop moves to the square, I I try to break the pin. And, you know, in, in the classical Dutch, the bishop nearly always goes to e7 anyway. So I'm going to break the pin here. And the other idea, when the bishop is on this square and you've got bishop e7 in, is that it gives black opportunities to move the knight into this square. And this is one of the main ideas of the Dutch, knight to e4. The knight comes into that square, a nice central square. Um, and one thing you must consider, especially when your opponent um, put, puts the, um, okay, he wants to be friends with me now. I better accept that as he's, you know, nice guy. It, when, when you put the bishop here, combine the knight here, one thing you always must watch out for. And again, you should always look at your opponent's move. What are they trying to do? Well, he's trying to control the square. And one thing you must watch out for in these positions is a plan involving bishop takes knight getting rid of my knight which is controlling that square and then when i recapture back let's say bishop takes bishop e4 and you can play like this so i could like for example castle bishop takes knight bishop takes e4 but then i don't really want him to break out of e4 um if i can help it you know it's it's but my opponent's playing he's playing quite sensible moves this a3 move you can see is very useful and a lot of you know a lot of squares even when i move the knight and my queen comes here, I'll never be able to come out to b4 then. So it's not a stupid plan my opponent's playing at all. It's quite a unique and interesting one. But also, I do like the idea of castling as well. Um, so I'm just seeing how, what this will be like. Takes, bishop takes e4. Do I have a good move there? I've got this dark square bishop. I can try... If I take it, I don't like those positions with a knight coming to e4. It's probably still equal, but I, I personally don't like them. Um, I can play c5, but I mean, knight e4, it, it, you know, it's it generally um, the move to play once your opponent is threatening e4, put your knight in that square first so he can't play it. And this doesn't just happen in this variation of the Dutch, this happens in um, some of the main lines of the Dutch defence when they do Fianchetto, their bishop to g2. It happens in multiple positions putting the knight here to stop them with some of their things. Okay, so we're just gonna go here. And um, now, okay, I can see my opponent's plan. He wants to try to get this pawn. I think I wanna keep my bishop for now. Uh, it just gives it, keeps it a bit more dynamic, the position. So I'm gonna take here. And now after knight here, I don't really want to play d5. The reason is it does block my bishop in. But unless I can find a good way to avoid playing this, I might have to play because I can't, I can't lose a pawn. Now, the, some of the first thoughts that come into mind is queen g5, trying to get the queen over there. So I just don't, I want, I don't want to put as things in the way of this bishop. You know, I, I don't want to block this bishop up if, if I can. So I don't want to put a pawn in the way. The other idea I'd like to play is castles. Let's say knight takes e4, then I'm just wondering if I have some tactics here. I mean, I'm even thinking about putting the bishop here to stop him castling there, but he can go queenside then. I don't think it's worth a pawn. So castling, 
Knight takes e4. And I'm thinking of queen over here then, attacking here, a bit of pressure here. But if you can defend against this, then I'm not going to play it. And I think g3 looks like a good way for him to defend. I mean, even then, queen to h3, and I get some compensation there. Let's say he goes queen d3, queen g2, castles queenside. Some compensation. I don't think it's quite enough. So I think I will put the queen over here because this creates a threat that my opponent has to do something about. And now I have the option of, I can still play d5 if I must. You've got to watch out for knight b5s here, but I think knight a6 will cover c7. And here, I'm thinking I want to play queen g6. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm playing this correctly or not. I'll be totally honest. Um, I think I will play queen g6. And I'm just trying to avoid playing this d5 move, as you can tell. I mean, one of the, if, if he plays f3 here, this could be quite a good move from him. But then when I take it, you can see my bishop doesn't have a pawn on d5 in the way, the way I've played it. I can also here, I mean, I can't really play knight c6. I mean, d5 might have been okay, but I just don't want to block this guy in. Um, okay, so he has gone here. And I think my next move is forced. I think I must play the knight to a6. I must defend this one. My knight is looking pretty ugly at this moment in time. I can't castle queenside, which I'd like to do to complicate because I drop a7. My opponent's playing very good moves. Um, well, I'm going to castle here. There's not much else that seems like a good option. And I think my plan should be I have a half open file. This is an open line where I don't have any pawns. So I think my plan should be to try and double rooks on this half open file to maybe get a little bit of pressure against my opponent's king. I mean, this does involve me losing this pawn. But this knight is doing a very good job of blocking up my queen side. I don't really like the move c6 because this knight will come into d6. Um, so it's a strange position, but I, 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 I'm not, not convinced that it, I, I'm not convinced that I played this in the correct manner. OK, but I think here I need to continue my plan of um, doubling rooks. I understand it might lose the a pawn, but I need to create some activity. Uh, is he gonna play f3 now and go for the ending? It, it's it's quite possible. Um, my pawn is a bit weak, so he's, play, he's played very well. He's played extremely well here. So I think I'm gonna go here, and I, I, I'm thinking now, look, I don't, don't really like the way this is going. So I might even consider now ideas of queen h5 and rook h6 trying to do stuff like this okay so now he's hitting this pawn d5 may be a move which i'm forced to play but let's just consider um my other possibilities for example queen h5 knight takes pawn rook h6 threatening check mate and then h3 um do i have enough compensation there not convinced, but I don't really, I just don't like playing this move. But he's played this like really, really, really well. Um, so, I mean, other options, if I go rook here, knight takes here, he steps into a pin, but I don't really see. I mean, I can go a weird move like rook f3 there, but king h1, is this just, my rook is not doing, oh, then I can, no, I can't take there, can I? No kind of just don't I mean my knight is a terrible piece thing with d5 I don't know I mean he, I'm, what I'm worried about if I play d5 is he's going to play f3 and then this bishop is just going to my, my minor pieces over here just look horrible to me so I want to avoid doing this somehow so let's say I continue with some kingside activity plan queen here knight takes here rook g6 it just goes f3 and I don't, I don't believe my attack so i think i might have to play this move i don't see any other option you can't just give away pawns for nothing um but now if he plays and plan with f3 well you know i'm a bit concerned about that 
because the other problem with my move d5, if you look at this square here, which is highlighted the e5 square, if he ever gets a knight into this square, and he probably should go via f3, so something like f3, if he can get his knight to this square, I can no longer kick it away with a move d6, because uh, the knight is is on an outpost, and I don't, you know, so I don't, I don't really. Okay, so he's taken it once. Now I don't think he should have done that because I had double pawns, unless he has a specific idea in mind, and he's playing a tactical idea of hitting here and hitting here. But I can always play queen f7, breaking the pin and guarding this one. So I'm positioning that exchange of pawns has helped me because I've got rid of my double pawns. And this gives me ideas of also getting a rook here. My pawn on e6 was a liability. So I could play like that, but let's just, just make sure there's no other. Well, I, th I, think I, I think I should play this, shouldn't I? And now f3 again is the only move that really, really worries me. If he plays f3, he's playing a fantastic game because then takes, knight takes, and his knight is maybe coming in here with tempo. So, but I think after f3, I probably have to take the pawn because of the pressure against my e4 pawn. Uh, then knight takes, so I can try tripling up here. He's playing great moves, which is annoying always. Um, so I think I have to take that one. I don't see any other option here. I mean, I don't like the other options anyway. I mean, rook here is maybe playable, but I just don't like his knight coming into the square, which it, it, it may well do. But what else do I play? I don't know, so I think I have to play this 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 move. Okay, so he's taken the rook, and now he wants to take here and take here, maybe. And if I take here, he wants to go knight takes, and again he has this idea. So I think I have to take this once, and I'm going to put my rook on f8. Because for the time being, he can't move his knight in because the queen f2 and queen f1 will be leading to checkmate. But I'm just concerned these guys are not playing well. And again, like you, you know, sometimes players just play very well, and this seems to be the case here. Um, now, his next plan is probably knight here. So I have two ways of dealing with this. Go away, you bloody fly. I'm thinking I, I can try to get a pawn to c4. This gives me at least a pawn majority. Or I move my queen first. But I, I want him to move his knight there because it's not as active. So I think I'm going to play c5 to try and gain at least some ideas. And if I go c4, it kicks his queen away from this active square. The other thing I'm thinking is my knight might better find a way back in now, you know, via c7. I, 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 you can't play a game of chess without your pieces working. If he takes on c5, I'll very happily move my knight to this active square, even if I get an isolated pawn. I'm also worried because my pieces become active, the knight comes here, maybe even the bishop comes here. So he's gone for this, and now I need to keep on my e6 pawn. So I need to move the queen here, and luckily this, this also pressurizes his pawn here. And you can see the reason I've done it this way is it will take him longer to get his knight to the ideal square now. It takes him two moves. And the first move he can't do it because e3 is on pre. So I imagine it's pretty equal. Pretty even position um, here. Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming. I mean, could I even be better here? I don't think I should be better. Maybe knight e2 is a good move now. He moves his knight. Oh, he's come in. Didn't see that one. And the idea is he, he wants this pawn. If I go pawn here, he's going to go queen to this square, and he stops my knight coming back round. So, uh, that's a good move. Well, I think I have to move the pawn here at some point. Nor do I... What can I play? If he takes here at the moment, I can take here, takes, but this check is easily met by knight here. So if he takes here, I suppose I have knight c7. And that brings, okay, so should I bring my king towards the middle? Let's try. 
I can defend my queen and I want to go king here and bring my knight to c7. I just need to try to get rid of this knight. And if he takes here... Hmm. Well, I'm, I, maybe I can go here, here, knight, knight. Hmm, I don't know. I think he can take here, to be honest. He can take here. And if knight c7, he can take here. I don't like this position so much. Because he has a queen b4 check in, in quite a lot of lines. But I think I have to give this pawn. Um, I don't see any other option. But he's playing very well. And again, like I say, when your opponent plays very well, even if their rating's low, you can struggle. Um, so, knight takes here is obviously critical. Now, I have a couple of ideas. Let's go back to pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, check. He has knight f1. And I, I just don't see what I do. I'm only attacking with one queen. The issue throughout the game has been these two guys. They're just not working that well. I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see the opening game because I want to see maybe this knight e4 move. It didn't actually, the change of pawn structure didn't work out too well in this particular case. So maybe that was my first error because I feel like I've done something wrong to, to, to get into the, the kind of thing. I've always been slightly on the back foot. I mean, positionally. I mean, it's not terrible, don't get me wrong, but... If he can take on a7, he will. So let's have a look. So takes on a7. I wanted to play knight c7, but then I realized he has pawn takes c5, which is a real annoying move. Because Okay, so he's gone for a more positional approach. He's just trying to get his knight into this square. Now, I think I have to play this move now. Uh, because there's no way I'm ever taking here now because his knight defends it. So I, I think I have to play this one. And the problem is if my king comes here, his knight comes in here with check. So this is the issue I have. So how do I deal with the problem of my two pieces? And I might be losing this pawn. So the only other thing, I don't want to come here. The only other way I can put my king is here to try to get my knight back into this square. But as I've said before, this is a tremendous square for his knight. Can I also try and just get my queen active? I don't think so. It's only one check. I mean, playing just with the queen doesn't seem very logical to me at all. So I think I'm going to have to go here and try and put the knight on c7. Don't see any other way of playing this position at the moment. Um, and the point is, if he takes here now, which he probably can do, knight c7... And at least his knight is a bit out of the game. So, okay, he's won a pawn, but I've made his knight bad. I'm sure he can take that pawn. I mean, I, I, I don't. I mean, he can take here, knight c7, and then play knight to e5. Um, this is this is one way he can play because my minor pieces are still not doing anything particularly great. I mean, this knight on e5 is a tremendous piece, and you can see why I did not. And he's done it, obviously. You can see why I did not want to play this move. So it's gone wrong. It's gone wrong. So I'm going to go knight c7. And I expect the knight will come in to e5 then. And then I'm not sure what I'm playing. Um, not sure what I am playing here, people. Uh, it's a difficult position for me. And it has been for a while. I have my doubts about the way I played this. And you can see why. I mean, should I try to get my knight to this square? It's the only active thing. It allows his knight out of the position, but in, in actual fact, his knight's quite annoying here anyway. The only thing I can see is just trying to get my pieces to the best squares. Obviously, I'm a pawn down. I'm struggling here, but I'm going to try to make life as, as difficult as I can for my opponent. So my knight is aiming for e4. At least then I have one good piece, but I'm always going to be left with this bad bishop uh, in, in the position. I want to make sure I'm not kicking Charlie, who's under the under the under the seat. So, okay. So, this is what I am aiming to achieve. Obviously, get the knight into e4. Um, now, if I was my opponent, obviously a move like queen b4, the best move again, because he is activating his queen. And I'm really in trouble here, in actual fact. This is bloody annoying. Uh, do I have to go for an ending now? I'm going to try and... Oh, no, because he has a knight, knight to f7 check. 
do I have to move my king here? But then I don't like it. He has knight check. And he has queen coming in. This is a really hard position to play. Knight here. His queen comes in with check. This is this is lost. It's lost. So annoying. I'm not playing well in these uh, long play games. But okay, everyone has a bad day. This is a bad day. This is certainly a bad day. Certainly a bad day for me. I don't know what I'm playing here. It's a very tricky position for me. Uh, well, I, I mean, I just play a move. I mean, I can't see what else to do. I'm going to put my queen here to try and cover this one, but I don't believe it. And uh, he can even move, sneak his queen further into my position, queen b5 here, which looks most annoying if he just puts his queen on b5 and tries to come in i mean i have to i'm on the i'm on the defensive and if he moves his queen here he's also threatening knight c6 to get his knight out so i think if he moves his queen in i probably just have to okay so he's gone for a check now if i take that one he's going to take here with check so he's gone for immediate tactics so i don't see any other option rather than moving my king to c7 I mean, at least on the positive side for me, if I am able to swap this bishop off, I get rid of one bad piece. So he's going for the ending. Now, this is absolutely fine way for my opponent to play. But, 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 I think it also relieves a bit of pressure on my position. I put the knight here to stop his knight coming here. And maybe I have ideas of going king here. His knight's not in danger because it can always come to c6 and back out. So, the other idea is c3, or if I can somehow attack this pawn with my knight. My bishop's still very bad, so don't get me wrong. So, can I trap this knight? This is the only way I can try to win here. So, check looks like the right way to play. And then if I get my king to d6, he has this square for his knight. So the other way I can try to play this is with c3, check, takes, and then go for his a pawn. So c3 takes, check, king here, takes here, king to this square. His king suddenly got a very good square, isn't it? Uh, so let's just, let's, this check, it, it, a lot of my plans are all, are all involving this check, aren't they? So let, let's just put the check in. Because if he comes this way now, then he, he makes his, okay, so he has come this way. And now c3, it might mean I can pick up a pawn um, in the position. The other thing is g6, but his king is coming. The other thing is g6 and king here. But he always has his knight just wriggling away. Then I can come over, and I'm getting quite nice centralization there. His knight can always, it feels like his knight is always getting out. But my king, my king does improve. So, is g6 a good idea here? I'm going to play it. Rather than playing c3, maybe I keep this threat of c3 available to me. Uh, I say a threat because what I'm going to try to do is then try to come for the a pawn. And I might win a pawn and have a pass b pawn. But ideally, I mean, I'd love to win this b pawn here somewhere. But that's probably fantasy land. The only way I can win that is by getting my knight to d1. My knight to d3 as well, but that both involves my knight coming to f2. The only way that's going to happen if he moves his king up. Uh, but what I'm trying to do here is just getting better centralization. So I want to go king d6. Then his knight might have to come here. Okay. So king d6, and then his knight goes to this square. And then king e6. And I'm trying to... I'm, I'm sort of it feels like I've made some progress then because his knight is put on a worse square knight g8 doesn't look like a good square for his knight and my king has come to a nice centralized roll um, now the reason I'm putting my king here I'm trying to take away as many squares for both his knights this square I'm taking away and this square, in some cases, I'm taking away. So this seems, this seems to me like I, I've made this ending. You know, like I said, I don't think he should have gone for the ending. And now, okay, he's put his knight here. It might be coming out. And surely it's time for me to play c3 now. 
this check. Can, does my knight have a good route? I don't see why. I must play c3. I must try to win this pawn. And I suppose what he's trying to do is get his knight to somewhere like g5. When he can win this pawn and this pawn potentially. So I'd, I don't know. It's a very tr tricky ending. Obviously being a pawn down, I'm always struggling in this in this ending. But my one idea now is to at least try and capture his a pawn and then you know then at least i get some possibilities with the b pawn try to try to always create as much counterplay as you can but my opponent has his own ideas putting his knight on this square so if he goes to this square what am i going to do he's, fi he's finding good moves you know do i have to go king here then his knight comes to a very nice square unfortunately and also he has knight here unfortunately so do i play h5 and at least try not to lose as many pawns as i can on that area of the board if you i mean i'm i'm trying to draw this one definitely being a pawn down and as a rule if you're trying to oh shit if i just oh i've just missed this one and that is game over that was just a blunder it happens bad game for me today bad bad game but well done to my opponent who played a very good game so we'll have a look at it with the computer and uh yeah i get very frustrated i do i'm just gonna resign there. there's no point in me playing on so i'll play i'll say well played uh, but i don't really mean it bastard buttered buttered me up buttered me up first and um then took me down so what is our accuracy levels here i really hope this guy is not like 99 percent because that would be that would be like that really upset me after he was so nice at the start you know well i mean again um you know it, 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 for for a 2100 2185 um you know i'm not going to accuse anyone cheating today but i, I i'm going to think about it <laughs> i'm just going to say i can't because he was so nice and he, but for a tw okay all i'm going to say is for a 2185 he played at 2600 over the board level uh because my accuracy look i mean my accuracy was okay my accuracy is 94.1 yeah which is not that bad let me just get rid of my face and we'll go through this with the computer now but my opponent's accuracy 97.5 i mean again i know this is not 100 percent accurate the accuracy levels you put on with this but it's a good indication of um you know I mean, generally, a 97.5 accuracy, accuracy percent level, I would say, is 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 around about uh, 2600 ELO strength. So for 2185, who's playing at 2600, it's incredibly impressive. So I'm not going to make any judgments today. Uh, I think what I'm going to do in future, I'm just going to have to not play as many long play games. And when I do play, I'm going to have to set them up and play people I know because I'm too paranoid and I, you know my opponent played it says one mistake we'll see what that is in free inaccuracies he's played a great game and i just want to play people who are more play more human moves this guy played extremely well so well done to man lopez let's have a look let's have a look shall we and i'm oh, okay just so paranoid now i hope you understand why i'm paranoid okay so a3 is excellent I mean that is already so dodgy i'm sorry but if a3 is the computer's top choice it's not the best move a3 i mean i'll, I'll get rid of my face because i'm probably gonna be smashing things up but that to me is so suspicious stockfish's best move is a3 but no human i've never had this before has played this against me I'm already very suspicious. I'm sorry to say. I'm just... I'm, God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I mean, come on. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, knight c3. b6 is in an accuracy. Well, that's not that bad. I'm not... I'm not I did. Bishop g5 is in an accuracy. Well, again, it's a normal move. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to... You know, I'm just wondering bishop b7 e3 bishop b7 bishop d3 is an accuracy he's playing these moves very quickly uh knight e4 was probably a mistake here you know i should have played uh 
just castles. But okay, 94. And now, now he gets this position, which in actual fact, you know, I don't like this position, I have to say. Queen g5, d5 is best, okay. So I didn't play very well either, I have to admit. I'm not playing a great game. This move was good. c4 is good. Okay. Castles, queen c2 is good. Rook f6 is good. Um, okay, knight c3, d5 is best. And around here, you can see I'm just slightly worse. If you keep an eye on the, the sort of score level here. Well, nearly a pawn worse. And Okay, f3 was good there, but queen b3 is good. And now f3. And here, here I, I definitely wasn't enjoying my position here, as you can tell. Because I just, my, my minor pieces and his e5 square. It's a very difficult position to play. So, all in all, this idea of knight e4 was not good for me in the opening. I, I, I will remember that. It didn't work very well here. This is a lesson um, worth remembering. My opponent's playing very good moves. Knight d1. I don't believe that's best. This looks best to me. And here, I think my opponent basically played perfectly. Uh, I'm really struggling here. And, well, it's a very tricky position. My opponent, it says this is a mistake, but he's still winning. So it's a comfortable mistake. So, okay. And again, this may be a mistake, but he is a pawn up in a safe ending. So, I mean, at the time, I, I did say it's let a bit of pressure off my position. But the way he played it from here on in still kind of proved to me that he's always... Uh, He's always winning. And I probably shouldn't mess around with his g6 move. I should have got on with c3 straight away. Because my idea of bringing my king in, well, his his knights were actually very tricky. And this move, well, I think he's basically winning now because he's either going to win my bishop, which obviously I miss, so it's a big blunder on my part. But it doesn't matter here. I've lost faith by here because I can see he's winning a second pawn. And then this pawn will be weak and my position is crumbling now. So... And this, of course, is, is a big blunder. So the one important thing to remember is in this position, let's have a look. This knight e4 move, which is often played, if I, I should have spent more time on this move, because again, as I kept stated, if I have to back it up with the move d5 later, this is a good rule for any Dutch players out there, so I've learned a lesson, and we can see later on, I had to play this move d5 at some stage. If you have to play like this, even if the computer gives its equal, I don't like those positions. So what I what I should have done here was, let's have a look. So if I had castled, the thing I was worried about is bishop takes here, bishop takes here, and then e4. But it's just finding the right solution here. And I thought it might involve c5 to try to get my bishop in the game. And the computer gives simply pawn takes, knight takes, and now c5 here I feel might be a good option. And this, yeah, this is, this is, the, the reason this works quite well is because I've just got that extra development. I'm castled, he's not, and I have this time to strike here. And we can see the computer's assessment, it's at least fine for me here. Maybe even fractionally, fractionally better. So what I do every time now I, I play one of these games, I mean, of course, my opponent's accuracy, like I say, he played 2600 level. His mistakes that he made were extremely minor and they were only one way to win rather than another way to win. So basically a perfect game. This A3 move, very weird. Um, what I always do now, because it just happens to me so often, I always uh, just get chess.com to check. If you think your opponent is a computer cheat, then you can just contact chess.com and obviously I've got, uh, I've got the hotline to them. So I'm just going to get them to use their great software and check this guy out, who, who seemed very nice. He either played a fantastic game or, or, or was helped a little bit, but either way, he played very well. So let's just, before we leave, have a look at this guy. And he joined 10 days ago. Okay. I know people say play. Okay. And, uh, well, you know, he's he's got some... Okay, okay, let me just show you. He's got some okay ratings, so he could well be a, he could well be a good player. I mean, these, this is his, this is his sort of ratings. Blitz twenty one sixty eight. Uh, you know, bullet 
1800. So, you know, it's, uh, I mean, Puzzle Rush 20, so it's quite hard to tell. But I will get chess.com to check him out anyway, because my, <laughs> my, my bloody, oh, I feel like swearing, my, my track record. But anyway, well played to, well played to Man Lopez, and um, I didn't play particularly well there either. Um, but hopefully you learned something. And the one thing I learned there is actually this plan of playing knight to e4. I'm going to have to be much more careful about playing that in future. It looks like a good move, but if white can capture and put the knight on d2, you just you can only play that position, I think, positionally without playing move d5. So that's something to remember. If you ever go knight e4, just bear in mind that it is playable, but only if you can avoid playing d5. I don't I don't like the positions where you play d5, it kills the bishop, it gives potentially the e5 square for my opponent. So I'm going to avoid playing knight e4 in future, so at least I've learned something, and that is always a useful thing to have. So cheers, thank you for watching that very riveting encounter. And I'll be back again soon. Cheers. Cheers for now.